Prey. No, not that one. Prey released in May of 2017 by Arcane Studios, specifically by Arcane Austin. Yeah, the same guys that brought us Redfall back in May. Oh, oh god. Yeah, these are the same guys, and it is astonishing how they went from this to this. Unlike the original Prey, which was a first-person shooter, which was also developed by a completely different developer and publisher, Prey 2017, which from now on I'm going to refer to as just Prey, is an immersive sim, and it is very good. Compared to the original Prey, these are two completely different games. There was originally going to be a Prey 2 that just got scrapped, and that sucks because it actually looked cool. Bethesda would eventually just consume the IP and Prey 2 originally before being scrapped. And so Arcane would get the chance to make a game under this IP, and it turned out like this. It has nothing from the scrapped Prey 2, and is nothing, not even close to what the original Prey was. And it is really, really good. So let's just stop wasting time and get into Prey. game opens up with you being able to choose what your character looks like between Markiplier Was that the bite of 87? Or woman My name is Skylar White, yo I of course chose Markiplier The game takes place, as of right now, uh, on March of 2032 Which is only 9 years away Oh, be on the lookout We play as an individual by the name of Morgan Yu Waking up in a nice apartment, getting a call from your brother Alex And then you put on your trans star suit and immediately discover the best part of the game There is also interactable screens on these computers, similar to a game like Doom 3 Looking outside and man, that is a beautiful view the lighting here is very good. Alright everyone, shut the fuck up. It's time for GAMING! I also discovered you could peek. It seems really useless and that's because it really is. I never found a use for this in the game. You can even read stuff. But I hate reading. And after destroying my apartment, I decided to take a shower. FEAR ME REDDIT! After walking out of my apartment, I seen this lonely ass fish over here. Look at him, he's fucking contemplating. There's also this woman here who is just not real. I then went into an elevator to be greeted by only two options. Roof and my floor. Is this my apartment? Are there more floors? When someone else pushes this button, does it take them to their floor or my floor? Then getting on the roof, you get into a helicopter as a really nice soundtrack starts playing. And you get one of my favorite game intros of all time, at least for a title card. You meet up with your brother Alex, and you get ready for testing. It is a few bit of random task, like picking up and moving boxes out of a circle. Hide behind a chair, jump over an obstacle, and answer questions. Wait, what was that? Ah! Wake up again, the same as before, except there's no upbeat music playing, just a weird ambience. Going onto the computer this time, you have six emails. Danger, leave now. Eom. If you couldn't tell, despite how obvious it is, something is wrong. Leaving the apartment again and... Oh. You get a flashlight you can turn on and off at will. And you get a wrench off of this person. Man, this feels just like Bioshock. You are then contacted by a mysterious man named January, and apparently what happened the prior day when testing did happen. You need to get out of your apartment, and I decided to jump out the window, and it was all a lie. After making your way through the testing area you were at, you get a full introduction to the first enemy type in the game. They are a part of a species called the Typhon. These tiny little fuckers are called Mimics. These guys can turn into any small object, and yeah, that's about it really. Later, you then run into a guy who gets killed by a mimic, and that mimic just gives birth. In this office, the game then yells at you, Play your way. 
I don't really have a problem with this. In fact, I like it. It gives a little bit of a taste of how you can approach the game, especially for people who are new to this type of gameplay. You are then introduced to technically the second weapon in the game, the glue cannon. This can shoot out glue, obviously, and it can freeze enemies in place, which kind of makes them take more damage. For Mimics, in some cases it one-shots, but not often. You are also introduced to Nero Mods. These are used for your upgrades. The first upgrade shows you just jabbing it into your eye, and yeah, there's that. The ability I chose to start off the game was hacking, at least in this playthrough. It's a very helpful ability. You can use it to open up safes, doors, and other stuff that requires it. And you get a mini game for it, because what game hasn't had a hacking mini game? I think it's good. It's... This is definitely one of the better hacking minigames I've played. At least it's not Bioshocks, good lord. Later on, you reach the Telos 1 lobby, and man, it is gorgeous. The Art Deco style they went with here is honestly great, and it's surprisingly fitting, given the context. Then, encountering the second enemy type, the Phantom. They're big. You need to get to your office, and when you do, you need to watch a video you made for yourself to tell you what happened and what you need to do. But Alex cuts the connection and refuses to let you hear it. Now I want to take a break from focusing on the story, because that sounds boring. I want to talk about all the gameplay. I got my next weapon at this point, the Huntress Boltcaster. Uh, it does no damage, but apparently it can open doors and stuff, but really, you, you don't need this. It's just kind of a goofy thing. And the next actual weapon, the Silenced Pistol, it is good at distances and does alright damage. There's a shotgun, which is a shotgun. It's alright for... A uh, shotgun, I guess. It's just not great. The Q beam, which sounds and looks awesome. Was that right? There's also throwables like the recycler charge, and it's very hungry. You also got typhon lures, which lure enemies, and yeah, that's it. I found no use for this. There's also the disruptor, which I think was a stun gun. At least it acts like it. There's also an EMP grenade, which is just whatever. It became somewhat useful towards the end of the game, but I didn't care too much. Then you got the Typhon abilities and the other upgrades that you use Nero mods on, which are pretty good. My favorite one is the Mimic ability, where you can turn into any object. Of course, it is best when it's maxed out. There's also ones like Psycho Shock, which is just the shock of damage. Mind Jack, which could make enemies fight for you or free humans from mind control. Machine Mind, which is literally just Mind Jack, but for machines. And Lift Field, which can let you make an airlift. I didn't really use any of these, aside from the Mimic ability. And if I did use any other ability, it was by pressing the button by accident. Back to the story, you find out your goal is to blow up Talos 1. There is a joke I can make here, but I don't think anyone will be happy. You can even go out in space. It's very spacey. You need to go through Psychotronics. See, that was just mean. I found another enemy type, this weaver guy. He's just a big floating guy. I also met this guy locked in a cell who I can't hear over this loud music, and he doesn't even make eye contact with me. I went through here and got a weird flash that seems to hint at something. Surely this won't return later, right? After crawling through a vent, and we then arrive in the Arboretum. There is a green room, and this guy just fucking dies. Michael! Don't leave me here! <laughs> this enemy here is a telepath. These are like a weaver, these guys can mind control humans, and they're like mini-bosses. Now I gotta talk about my favorite part of the game. The ability to pick up and throw items. It's stupid, I know. But it is so funny being able to pick up and chuck random items at enemies and kill them. And the game is also pretty buggy at points. Now, no, I don't mean like Redfall kind of bugs. Not all of them, at least. You know what? I done had it with these damn mimics. Take the power of music! Oh god, what the hell happened? Why is he dancing? Uh, what, what the fuck happened to the glue gun? Oh no. I can't even move. You... Huh? 
No, let me just uh, use the mimic ability. Oh! Did he? Oh my god, I got him stuck in the wall. Yep, that's normal. These kinds of things make the game for me. Is it good that it happens? Probably not. But it just makes the game really funny. Throwing things also seems to be the cause of some of these issues as well. Especially things that explode. Quick, I need a gameplay mechanic to talk about that I haven't spoke on yet. You got anything, random corpse? Urethra! So the game has crafting. You can use materials to craft different items from ammo, medkits, and neuromods. You can use these recycler machines and can turn junk, extra weapons, because yes, you get a lot of weapons in this game, and other stuff into materials you can use to craft. There are also these huge monsters called nightmares that you can encounter. Whenever they appear, they are kind of scary. I mean, yeah, it's a big-ass blob that screams at you. Who wouldn't be afraid of this? I feel like this is something people are into. Their whole purpose is to kill Morgan Yu. Reason? Why? Because fuck Markiplier. <laughs> you will encounter your first nightmare after reaching the Arboretum if you have acquired any Typhon abilities. So I guess the Typhon abilities just give you schizophrenia. Giving you three minutes to either evade or just kill the beast. Now, no matter what you do, these assholes always come back like their name was Afton. But getting away from them will give you 20 minutes free from them, and killing them will give you 30. And you know what? I love this. I love when games have a beefy motherfucker just hunting you, making you feel unsafe at all times. Kind of like the IRS. I know this is random to add at this point, but the soundtrack is so fucking good. It was mostly done by Mick Gordon, the guy that did the Doom 2016 soundtrack. And just like that game, this soundtrack is amazing. I mean, the title theme alone is just awesome. It's got this futuristic sound to it with a little bit of space vibes added to it. It is so good. And the little tunes that play when you complete quests, mwah, chef's kiss. It's fucking amazing. Just like most of this game. There are humans alive on the station, believe it or not. Like this cook. Who let this man cook? Never again. It turns out this guy isn't really who he says he is. He is some... I hate to say this, but imposter. He will try to kill you if he is not dead or unconscious when you go into the freezer in his kitchen. So I decide to hack right in front no. of him. I like whenever you pick up a weapon for the first time, it plays a bit of an animation showing it off. I can see I wasn't the only one that thoroughly enjoyed Doom 2016. In terms of the other animations, they are fine, I guess. Later on in the game, I discovered there was a woman outside. And can we just address the elephant in the room? No, it's not the fact that there's women in my video games, but the trans star suits. They are so fucking cool. I love these. I want one in real life. Arcade, please send me one, and I will apologize for what I said about Redfall. The concept art for this game, and the art in general, just like with every other arcane game, is very good. I wish the studio did not fall off the way that they did. Back to the woman in space, it turns out what we did to the cook was good. And he killed this woman's girlfriend. I know, random insult on the internet. Woke liberal trash. You know what my response to that is? Kill yourself. And she does what she can to help you get into deep storage, and I'm finally going to address it. I know, I'm sorry, I'm not really ta talking about the story all that much or what happens in the game involving the plot. It's because I don't care. There are so many audio logs and if you want my honest opinion, which you shouldn't, they all are really good at world building. My only problem is, uh, I don't want to listen to them. But honestly, the story really was never the appeal of the game for me, as should be expected. The appeal of most games is never the story. Yeah, you have cases like Manhunt and Bioshock, which tell interesting stories. Prey, in my opinion, however, doesn't. Although, I think the ending really makes up for that, which we will get to toward the end, of course. Back to the funny stuff, I discovered you can slide. It is so useless of a feature, as I discovered it so late into my playthrough, and this isn't even my first playthrough. In an elevator, the power went out, and a phantom spawned in the elevator somehow, so I knocked him out. 
Ha, the bitch can't get me from up here. Oh no, oh no, oh hell no. Ah! I discovered in the Arboretum that there was an escape pod. You can choose to abandon Talos one if you have the keys. And if you do, you get a bit of a strange scene. So, this technically counts as an ending, despite the fact that you die and just reload a save. It is definitely strange, but I will explain it more when we get toward the end. One thing I found interesting is there is a guy trapped in a container in space named Dr. Igwe. He's literally voiced by Seer from Apex Legends, and it's strange hearing his voice in both games when he sounds the exact same in both roles. At one point in the game, you discover a group of survivors, and there's this one guy here who just moves his lips but says nothing. <laughs> then got bored and decided to go on a rampage with a chair. The lack of audio here is just so fucking funny. This game is peak comedy. <laughs> a cute little detail, if you take all the food away from the survivors, this one girl just whines at you. you Nothing comes out of it, but it was interesting. I don't know what you're planning, Morgan, but just remember, the only thing that matters is how you treat the people that are still alive. Man, surely that line has no meaning on the actual story of the game. Surely not. You then go to war with the Typhon, and this person contracts AIDS. Dr. Yu, were you up in crew quarters? Have you seen any sign of my wife? Later on in the game, you eventually meet this one girl who is sick and you need to retrieve medicine for her before she dies. Since I am a totally not mean person, I did it and we saved another life. I also found some food on the way up, left it on the desk. Don't worry, they're alien proof. I checked them, no twitching. To be sure, I let Igwe sample them first. Pardon me? I'm joking, Igwe. I wouldn't willingly expose you to aliens. Or anyone else. That would be inhuman. He was imprisoned for questioning the Soviet. Hello. I found the space shuttle outside of Talos 1. There was a bunch of corpses floating around and you could get some supplies from it. But I wish there was more stuff to do in space outside of Talos 1. Aside from traveling around, there really isn't much to do out here. Mm. Oh, did I mention you could scan things with this thing? Yeah, I didn't do it too much and only realized it after starting a recent playthrough. But scanning enemies can let you know their weaknesses and just be overall helpful to you throughout the game. But I forget to use it sometimes. At one point in the game, this guy named Doll takes over. And every robot in the game is pretty much an enemy. An annoying one at that. If you saved up EMPs, then here you go. Go nuts. This part of the game, in my opinion, is just kind of eh. It's not bad by any means, but the military operators just kind of feel a bit bland to fight. But I will admit, it is funny watching them fight the Typhon. Ah, uh, yeah, that's not supposed to happen. There is a point where Dahl decides to try and take away oxygen from the survivors, and he looks very stupid. You can use the disruptor to knock him out, and damn, it is effective. And then save the survivors. Oh my god, the Typhon used turrets. You know what, maybe this place is beyond saving. You can meet up with Igwe, who has somehow got doll strapped to a chair, and we get to... I am I witnessing an execution? Later, you can have a talk with Alex and... Holy shit, Fortnite live event? The thing goes by the name Apex. Yes, we have to survive Apex Legends, a truly horrifying moment. The gravity is gone and Alex gets knocked out, so you need to put him in a safe room so he doesn't die. Way later into the game, after you set Talos 1 up for self-destruction, you get another strange cutscene. Surely, this won't mean anything in the future. You can find this thing later on called the Coral, and you put this no-wave transmitter device on it. And after a bunch of more walking around, you will arrive at the command deck. And wow, this is actually cool. Hey, can someone call the IT guy? The computer broke again. Kill yourself! You then meet Alex in January fighting or something. 
well, damn. January just knocks him out. You then take a seat and watch as Telos once self-destructs. At least in my case. escape pod's working. Are you sure? Morgan, something's wrong. There's no time. Trust me. I'll see you Earthside. I keep having this dream. When the credits are done, however, you then arrive in a hidden place. Here we find out it was all a simulation. Ooh, the Matrix. Ooh, I'm an alpha male. Ooh. Alex talks with a few robots who are all voiced by the somewhat important characters you encounter on Telus 1. They discuss your actions and what you did there. And then they show you what Earth is like in that current moment. And it looks like hell. You then get the choice kill them all or take Alex's hand and join forces. Now see, I am a good person according to Igwe and I decided to take Alex's hand, but at this point we learn we are not Morgan, but we are a Typhon implanted with Morgan's memories. This also explains what happens when you try to leave Telus 1. But there are other ways you can get out of here, like this one where you take Doll's shuttle and escape with everyone safely. Either way, Talos 1 gets destroyed. And that's Prey. The developers of this game would later develop the atrocity known as Redfall. And if you haven't heard it enough already, this game is terrible even if it was playable. After replaying Prey, you can tell the developers wanted to make this game. Prey has its problems, quite a bit of them, I won't lie. But you can tell the developers loved what they were making. They were, there was care put into it. I love Prey, this game is amazing. I still remember the first time I ever played this and I will always come back to it. Mostly because of how broken the game can be, but it is still an amazing game. And you know what? It's even a masterpiece. I said it. I would love to get a sequel to this game or at the very least a game within the same universe. But at the rate we're going, probably not a good idea. Hopefully someone cool and good at their job can snag the IP for themselves so we can one day get another game like this. But for now, I'm gonna sit in my room depressed about this never-ending nightmare of Microsoft making shitty exclusives. I apologize for those that expected a more, well, formatted video. That's your first mistake, expecting that kind of class from a guy named... This. What did you think of Prey? Did you like it? If you didn't... I want nothing to do with you. Like the video if you love Prey, subscribe for more horrible content, follow me on Twitter for political debates, I, I don't know. And if you enjoyed the video, good. Now goodbye.